Eu acho que o Shale... Shale Sonnen has talked more trash than anybody I ever faced. He's got 12 pounds of gold and I want it and there can be only one champion. There's this dirtbag named Anderson Silva. I've had it. He's a fraud. He's a jerk. Anderson Silva's a liar. I'm going to walk out there and beat up Anderson. And in two months, nobody will care about him again. This isn't like any other match. This is a very special match. This is a match that I've asked for. This isn't going to be a war. This is going to be a one-sided pounding, and I'm swinging the hammer. I've painted myself into a corner, and I will continue to. I'm going to walk right through him. I'm going to grab his legs. I'm going to push him in that fence. I'm going to pick him up. I'm going to put him on his prissy little ass. Beautiful takedown by Chael Sonnen. But I've been like a wounded animal plenty of times. And when he gets backed in a corner, he will do anything to come out. I am giving Anderson Silva the fair chance to back out and back out now. He talks like a champion, but in the octagon, we'll find out quickly if he can fight like one. I don't want to be an also ran. I'm here to be the king of the mountain, or I'll move on in life and do something else. I think I can beat any man God ever made. UFC middleweight champion Anderson Silva puts his undefeated UFC record and his title on the line against relentless top contender Chael Sonnen. Former UFC welterweight champion Matt Hughes takes on jiu-jitsu expert Ricardo Almeida. Welterweight stars John Fitch and Tiago Alves rematch. And heavyweight ultimate fighter winner Roy Nelson goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with knockout machine Junior Dos Santos. The countdown to UFC 117 starts now. Anderson! Who can stop that man? Since Anderson Silva joined the UFC in June of 2006, he has won 11 straight fights and defended his title six times, both UFC records. Anderson Silva is the pound for pound most skilled fighter, most well rounded fighter, most spectacular fighter on the planet. But his performance in April against jiu jitsu expert Damian Maya left fight fans with a bad taste in their mouths. In his interviews before the fight, Damon was disrespectful to me and to all my previous opponents. I didn't appreciate some of the things he said. It just upset him, and he wanted to go out there and humiliate him, and, and I believe that's exactly what he did for the first three rounds. But in the fourth round, the attack stopped. Let's go, fight! What is this? I don't know what Anderson's doing here. There was one point where he hid behind the referee that I thought was very funny, but I was in a room full of people in a bar, and they all booed him. And I'm like, that's actually a very funny move that he's doing right there. And then he did it again where he got the referee had to push him. Nobody? I'm alone? This is the kind of stuff that drives Dana White nuts. I used my technique to move around the ring and did exactly what I want to do during the fight. And sometimes the fans don't seem to understand that. And still, the UFC middleweight champion of the world, Anderson the Spider! Would I have liked to see him finish? Yes, I would have liked to see him finish. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. Not exciting. Not the way to make fans. Not the way to make Dana White happy. I don't think I've ever been more embarrassed in the 10 years of being in this business. And it's the first time that I've ever walked out on a main event and given the belt to the guy's manager and told him to put it on him. If you're that talented, be Mike Tyson. Go in and finish it in two minutes. He's not going to risk his own health or his own safety doing something reckless just to get people excited. 
He's the one with the belt. He's the one with the title. You want the title? Come take it from him. At the end of the day, put somebody in there that's gonna go after him. People say, Chael, you're getting ready for war. Guys, this isn't gonna be a war. This is gonna be a one-sided pounding and I'm swinging the hammer. I sent Dana a text. I said, I promise I will engage that guy from bell to bell. And Dana wrote me right back instantly. Chael's gonna go after it. I think he brings a completely different dimension on Anderson. He's been fighting these jujitsu guys who have a hard time taking him down. Chael Sonnen will get him down to the ground. That I guarantee you. He's got a hold of him. He's going for a ride. Bam! I got two national championship plaques on my wall that says I can take him down. Look how effortlessly he got that. I beat every champion there's ever been except one. I've stuck my finger in this guy's chest for four years, and he fought everybody in the world that wasn't named Chael Sonnen. A lot of people have been calling out Anderson. You have to take your place in line, man. Take a number. It's like you're at Penguins getting yogurt. Take your number and sit in line until your number's called. He doesn't want this fight. They faxed me the contract. I signed it in six minutes. They faxed him the contract. He signed it in six weeks. Six weeks? I don't think so. Maybe Anderson was uh, Googling him to find out who Chael Shonen was. I'm a country boy. I believe in hard work. I believe in waking up early and contributing to your society. This is a grown man with earrings, crooked hats, and pink shirts. I don't have any room for this guy. You know, if you're going to be champion, behave like it. He's talked so much trash to Anderson. I mean, just a nonstop barrage. He's just talking mad every chance he gets, and he's really good at it. Anderson's a liar, and Anderson's a fraud. Anderson lied to us because he said he would fight Damian Maya and he didn't go out and fight. That makes him a liar. He said he would fight in Abu Dhabi and he didn't fight. I have an obligation to make him fight. And listen, he's a fraud. Anderson likes to come out and be really nice and talk in a soft voice. He loves to bow. Hey, listen, he's not from a bowing culture. They don't bow in Brazil. All this handshaking and hugging and bowing, that's all crap. He's saying that I'm a fake and a liar. Well, you know what? When we're inside the octagon, he's going to have to back up all these things he's saying about me. At the UFC Fan Expo in May, the two combatants crossed paths for the first time since the contracts were signed. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I saw Anderson in Las Vegas. His eyeballs go to the curb. He doesn't look me in the eye. Come on now, Shale. Let's be realistic here. Now, if you were a hot-looking chick with beautiful green eyes, a big butt, big, nice breasts, then I would be looking at you all the time. But look at you. You're dirty, you stink, you smell like a bear. Why the hell would I want to look at you? Well, Anderson was signing a group of autographs. He looked like he didn't want to be signing them, and I let him know that in two months he won't have to sign anymore because nobody will care about him again. And when he looked up, his face went blank, and he was looking at me, and I gave him the old two months, you're done sign. And I walked off down the hall. And he came up, I heard somebody saying my name. Chael, Chael. I thought, gosh, is that Anderson? I looked back, and he's about four feet from me. So I think, okay, this is happening right now. So I turn to square up with him, and he throws his arm around me in, like, friendship. Chael, relax. Chael, relax. Relax, relax. We are already going to fight. We are already scheduled to do that. So why would I bother fighting you at the expo? You're not even worth my time. You're going to have a tremendous amount of emotions in the fight. Damian Maya had apparently said some things in the pre-fight interviews that pissed Anderson Silva off, and we saw what happened when Anderson got Damian in the octagon. He went crazy. He started screaming and yelling at him. What is he saying to him? Calling him a mama's boy in Portuguese and saying, where's your jiu-jitsu? 
what Damien Maya said is incredibly mild in comparison to what Chael Sonnen has said. I, I loved it that he said he treated Damien Maya that way because Damien disrespected him and didn't belong in the octagon with him. Well, Anderson, if disrespect doesn't belong in the octagon, I don't belong in the galaxy with you because I have no respect for you. So, so take that and come do something about it. As the fight gets closer, this is going to become more of a whirlwind, and all of this trash talking is going to cause a fiasco in his mind. He's doing a hell of a job promoting this fight, but when the time comes, you know, he's going to be sorry he stepped in the octagon with Anderson. There's no way he's going to take a challenger that has talked this much lightly. He's going to want to really hurt Chael Sonnen. He's going to want to make a mockery out of Chael Sonnen. He's going to want to batter him, blast him into orbit, and just let everybody know that he should have never opened his mouth. His running is done. His 15 minutes of fame are up, and I'm going to bring it to an abrupt halt. You can't be just good off your back with a guy like Chael Sonnen. you got to be a murderer. There is no possible way that this fight is not going to be an all-out war. Coming up. Get his legs down! Get his legs down! My dad was, he, he was intense. There was only one goal, and that was to be the best. That was real tough. When he felt Chael didn't give 110%, Chael uh, went home and moved rocks. The day he passed away, I told him, I'm going to win the, the world championship. I grew up in the country. We had uh, property. My father was a horse breeder. So we had a lot of chores, a lot of work to do. I was never really young. I've always been grown up. My dad wrestled. My uncles all wrestled. My cousins were all really good wrestlers. And I always wanted to be like them. We'd go to family gatherings, and I'd always want to wrestle. No, set it up tight on him. Go, Chael, go! I don't know how to play any sport or any games of any kind except this one. I don't even know any card game. This is it. This is all I've ever done in terms of like a social life or for activities. This is it. Get it locked up, tail down. Get his legs down. Get his legs down. Well, my dad was he he was intense. There was only one goal, and that was to be the best. And it didn't matter at what. Pat was tough. That was real tough. When he felt Chael didn't give 110%, Chael uh, went home and moved rocks. There was a tournament that I didn't place in. I, I lost my two matches I didn't place. So it was a high school tournament. And we had this crummy old wheelbarrow that just waddled as you moved it. And I had to fill it full of these rocks and stones. And I had to move it through the field and load these rocks into a different pile. And then once I got all the rocks moved, I just had to move all the rocks back. It was tough love. But, uh, I mean, he loved his dad. They're very much alike. They set goals, and they, they achieve them. And it doesn't seem to bother Chael that there's a lot of work involved. After winning two Oregon State wrestling titles at West Lynn High School, Chael attended the University of Oregon, where his success continued. I won two national championships in Greco-Roman wrestling. I got a silver medal at the World Championships, and I was named Wrestler of the Year in 2000 overall for all three styles. But wrestling was already losing its allure. The whole point of wrestling was to find out who's the toughest. And that's what wrestling was. Whoever could win the, the, the state championship was the toughest guy in the state. If you could win the nationals, you're the toughest guy in the country. If you could win the Olympics, you're the toughest guy in the world. Then along came the UFC. And that was the, the, the first and only thing ever that's been tougher than wrestling. And as soon as I saw that, I knew that. I knew I've got to change course a little bit here. Shale began training at Team Quest in Portland with future UFC champion Randy Couture. When Chael first came to Team Quest to start training, he had an ornery streak in him in, in wrestling. I was always trying to find that ornery streak in him for his fights, because if he brought that out in his fights, he'd be hell on wheels. Chael won his first five fights and had a five-fight winning streak in 2003 and four. He's on his back. Whoa, nice reversal. 
Russell by Chael. Starting in August of 2006, he won seven of eight, including a victory over WEC champ Paulo Filo. Last October, he took on Yushin Okami, one of the most dangerous middleweights in the world. Oh! Okami tags him, and then Sonnen comes right back. Yushin is a tough guy, and Chael just tossed him around, really dominated every single aspect of that fight. Dominated the stand-up, dominated the ground game. Sonnen showed some strength. The victory earned Chael a showdown with top contender Nate Marquardt. He came into the Nate Marquardt fight an underdog. A lot of people thought that Nate Marquardt was the guy next in line for a shot at Anderson Silva's title. Marquardt oh, with a head kick. Marquardt. Nate had just been steamrolling guys, knocking people out. Looks spectacular. Camp is in trouble. Marquardt with the uppercut, teeing off. Now, I'll be honest right now, I said, I don't see how this guy wins this fight. Let me tell you what, he won that fight. He went out and got in Nate's face, took him down, got that top position, and, and literally beat on him. He's showing some serious ground attack. Chael Sonnen just ran him over. Oh, big shot. Chael Sonnen! In the last two fights, we've really seen you reach your full potential. Really just outstanding performances. You've got to be happy with your position right now in the middleweight division. Yeah, you know, I don't want to be an also ran. I'm here to be hey, the king of the mountain, or I'll, I'll move on in life and do something else. I think I can beat any man God ever made. Unfortunately, the man who instilled Chael's drive and perseverance hasn't seen the end result. His father passed away in 2003. The day he passed away, I told him I'm going to win the, the world championship. It's the only promise that I ever made him that I didn't keep. And uh, I've done everything in my power to keep it. And I will continue to. Chell lives in a pretty much black and white world. You know, you either don't do it or you do it. If you say you're going to do it, do it. It's a lifetime of work for that one moment where I've sacrificed everything. Every relationship I've had, every material item, I would give them all back. I'd start over tomorrow from scratch to be champion for one night. Coming up. Chael Sonnen can win this fight. You can't be just good off your back with a guy like Chael Sonnen. You gotta be a murderer. Everybody has something to say of what they're going to do to Anderson. Let's see if he can really do what he says he's going to do. I've got the snake by the head. I'm going to chop that head off. I'm going to win that championship. So long, so dangerous, so versatile. Stylistically, it's a very interesting fight. Displayed by Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen is an outstanding wrestler. He has some of the very best takedowns in the UFC. Chael Sonnen with a solid dice. Beautiful. Beautiful. He drives through guys. Beautiful takedown by Chael Sonnen. Damn. Anderson hasn't had people pushing and pulling and wearing on him. Silva, aggressive here in round one. He's just battling the air. You know, he looks like he's at a dance club. That's not very tiring. Again with the kicks, putting on a show. Chael Sonnen, he can really beat guys up in this spot in a way that they're not used to. They're not used to getting controlled and manhandled like this. Getting a really high-level wrestler to get him on his back and smash him with elbows and punches and rough him up and cut him, we haven't seen that happen to him before. Chael Sonnen is just the type of guy that might be able to do that. Got him up in the air and down. Superior grappling ability being displayed by Chael Sonnen. Uh. This kid is tough. He's going to ground and pound him. He's going to take him down. He's going to beat him up. We call it chopping wood, baby. We're chopping wood, and that tree's going to fall. Oh, big shot. Everybody has something to say of what they're going to do to Anderson. Let's see if he can really do what he says he's going to do. If he can, congratulations. I doubt it. Push his forward. So smooth yeah. on his feet. The thing about Anderson, though, it's, it's hard to catch him, man. His movement, his agility, it's second to none. I mean, it's amazing. Nice sprawl. I mean, look at that. So evasive. Completely avoided that. He dives on him again, just unable to.
able to grab a hold of him. I could drag Anderson Silva outside the expo and beat him up. I want to do it when millions of people are watching. Chael Sonnen can win this fight. And he's beating up Nate Marquardt, but that one hurt him. If Chael Sonnen fights the way he fought against Nate Marquardt, if he fights the way he fought against Yushin Okami, he is a handful for any man that's 185 pounds. Anderson Silva is not Nate Marquardt. And he's not Okami. He doesn't have anything that could surprise Anderson at all. What about if he takes him down? Well, what is he gonna do? You know, Anderson is gonna work him from underneath. He does see what he's doing. He's doing his and probably will submit him. Anderson Silva looking to choke out Anderson. Anderson. Is that his own If Chael comes in, he's got to be prepared for uppercuts and knees because that's what's going to be coming. Flying knees. Uh -oh. knees to the body. Oh, vicious. I actually have proof of it right now when you see on my left eye. <laughs> I actually shot in on him and up came a knee out from nowhere. Prince Lehman goes that's down it. again. And it is all over. Wow. It is all over. Is Anderson Silva. Oh, oh he's oh, right here. Anderson's gonna hit me really hard. Anderson's gonna kick me and he's gonna knee me. And it's gonna hurt a lot. That's what I was talking about. This is a different kind of striker. But I'm gonna walk right through it. He landed a good combination on Chael Sutton. I'm gonna get beat up. But he's gonna get beat up a lot worse. He's showing some serious ground Oh, he's opened up, Joe. Oh, big shot. He doesn't have enough skills to beat Anderson up, you know? I mean, he, he, if he, he stands up with Anderson, he's dead. He's saying, stand up with me. I've got the snake by the head. I'm going to chop that head off. I'm going to win that championship. worried about his submissions. You know, I think my wrestling is really going to pay off. Last guy who said that he couldn't beat me on the ground didn't even make it out of the first round. Ricardo, big dog Almeida. Matt Hughes versus Ricardo, big dog Almeida. First of all, it is a revenge fight for Ricardo Almeida. Ricardo Almeida is a lifelong student of the great Henzo Gracie, and Henzo Gracie was dismantled by Matt Hughes in Abu Dhabi. Uh, those are good kicks. Henzo was leg kicked to the point where he couldn't stand up anymore. Oh, down goes Gracie. Ricardo Almeida is a very different fighter than Henzo Gracie. He's going in and it's all over! Ricardo, big dog Almeida! Ricardo is a much better striker. He's much more fluid on his feet. He has better takedown defense. He has better takedowns. I'm not worried about his submissions. It's it's up. Up. It's all over. It's all over. He's tricky on the ground, there's no doubt about that. But, uh, you know, I think my wrestling is really going to pay off. I think I can put him in bad situations where he gets tired on his feet, and hopefully I can put him in some bad situations to where he has to panic a little bit. Matt Hughes is one of the most successful welterweights in the history of the sport, if not the most successful. He's very, very physically strong. He's very good at dictating where the fight takes place, taking guys down, getting on top of them, and smashing them. That's what he does best. And again, one, two. Joe's in big trouble. To fight a guy like Matthews is you have to stop the takedowns to be able to win, but if you can't stop the takedowns, you have to have a good guard. Last guy who said that he couldn't beat me on the ground didn't even make it out of the first round. Let's see what he can do. Uh, I think it's a very intriguing matchup. Matthews comes forward, he tries to take you down, he tries to manhandle you. We're gonna see fireworks. Up next. Tiago Alves seeks revenge. All my efforts, all my attentions, all my thoughts, workouts, everything is based on putting Tiago away. I want the greatest jump fish ever lived. 
because I'm gonna knock the out of the greatest jump fish ever lived. Four Chael Sonnen challenges the top middleweight in the universe. Two of the world's top welterweights will engage in a rematch that was supposed to happen five months earlier. But just days before the fight, Tiago Alves received disturbing news. My manager called me and I said, Tiago, you're not gonna be fighting. I say, are you kidding me, right? What's going on? Like, we don't know yet, but they found something in your medicals and your MRI. Doctors had discovered an abnormal collection of blood vessels in Tiago's brain, likely there since birth. I was really, really scared because they say the brain, you know, brain procedures was like, okay, if, if it's something in my brain, maybe they're gonna have to open up my head. With what I do, if you open up my head, it's gonna be really hard for me to keep fighting and everything. So it's like, man, I can't believe this is happening. Well, what am I gonna do? You know, I've been a professional fighter since I was 15. I left everything that I knew and to come here to America when I was 19 with $70 in my pocket, no English, you know, to pursue my dream. Here we go, guys. Procedure day. Just pray for me. Those three days, I was like, I was lost. Fortunately, doctors were able to correct the malformation without invasive surgery. I'm back. After a couple restless months of inactivity, Tiago has finally been cleared to resume fighting. Good morning. Let's do this. I'm really grateful. I wake up every day and I thank God to be alive. I see things in a whole different way. You know, I appreciate every little thing. Every time I step into that door, you know, I, I thank God for another day for do what I love to do, you know, see all my friends and I'll say all my family here again, and it's priceless. So every day is a great day for me. I got no complaints whatsoever. I'm hungrier than ever. I still want to be the best Walter Wade in the world. The first man in Tiago's path is the man he was scheduled to fight before the life-changing exam, top contender John Fitch. I've cleaned out one side of that weight class. He's cleaned out the other. I beat him. It's kind of like putting all those wins in my back pocket, too. It's a bad matchup for him because I'm hungry. I want my revenge against him. Fitch and Alves originally met nearly four years ago. This should be a great fight. Both these guys are oh, very my. impressive. I was really young when it comes to the cutting weight thing, so I was really trained. And a kick by John Fitch, and he yes, goes he right does. for the double leg again. He got beat every single aspect of that fight, every single minute. Alves just trying to survive here in the second round. He got beat on the feet, he got beat in the clinch, he got beat on the ground. From the, the moment I got on top, it was just a, a ground opponent onslaught until uh, I finished him towards the end of the second round. This will this be it. it. It's all wow. over. Very impressive performance by John Fitch. Posturing up quickly as Alves. Throwing down crazy. hammers. Both men have improved dramatically since the first meeting, but more so Tiago Alves. Tiago Alves was really outclassed in that fight, and I think the rematch is going to be a completely different fight. Oh, oh, my hand. Down goes to Souza. I love rematch. You know, I love rematch. I had my rematch against Eric Noble, you know, and I knocked him out in the second round. Then oh, I'm going to knock Fitch out. Nobody stopped that guy. That's my goal. I'm going to knock him out and make a statement. Tonight. Thiago's made a lot of changes, but it's still not enough to beat me. Beautiful! Thiago Alves, what he likes to do is stand in there and bash your brains in. That's what he likes to do. Kick your legs out from under you and punch your face in. Oh, oh 50. 50. That is he huge. He's in trouble. That's and right. it is all over! Wow! It is all over! He's going to try to stand up a little bit and try to take me down. But it's just not going to happen. I've been wrestling since I was in the fourth grade. I've got way more tricks up my sleeves about taking people down than he's been able to develop with stopping someone's takedown. Fitch now takes him down. Let's go, yep, yep, go, 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 don't stop, don't stop. If I can stop Tiago Alves, I did something twice that GSP couldn't do in five rounds. All my efforts, all my attentions, all my thoughts, uh, workouts, everything is based on putting Tiago away. Fitch looking to finish, Tiago! 
that's what I want, and I want the greatest jump fish ever lived because I'm gonna knock the f out of the greatest jump fish ever lived. So bring it. If he tried to stay stand up with me and use his boxing or his Muay Thai, I will knock him out. At the end of the day, Junior's gonna go. I'll never fight Roy Nelson again. Congratulations, Forrest Griffin. You are the ultimate fighter. The first four winners on The Ultimate Fighter all went on to fight for a UFC championship. Matt the Terror! But of the last 11 winners, only Matt Serra has reached that height. Roy Big Country Nelson! Roy Nelson, heavyweight victor of season 10, has a chance to change that. He's not your typical UFC fighter. He's not the guy that's uh, all ripped. Roy Nelson! He's like the guy you'd see next door. Roy Nelson's a funny looking guy, but hey, he's very, very tough. His ground game is great, he hits really hard. I can tell you, Junior Dos Santos is taking Roy Nelson very, very seriously. I just feel privileged that they're throwing me with the Lions, and you know what? I don't think nobody wants to fight him. If I have to fight him to get where I need to go, then I'm willing to take it. Seven years ago, Roy Nelson was a jiu-jitsu trainer and sparring partner for some of the world's top fighters. I've trained with Tito Ortiz, Chuck Liddell, BJ Penn, Randy Couture. Roy is one of those guys that you look at and you go, man, you know, what's he doing? Aside from his appearance, he's a well-conditioned guy. He can go. <laughs> And then I got to the point where I actually got a house, and I got a mortgage, I got car payments. I just figured it'd be so much easier just to go fight and just take their money. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Always happiest when trotting off the beaten path, Roy built a gym in his dining room. He turned pro, winning his first six fights, four by submission. <laughs> In 2007, Roy earned a spot in the International Fight League, and a year later, won the heavyweight title. I was the only heavyweight IFL champion. I was the only one to ever defend it, and I will be the only one that will ever have the belt. But Roy's big break came in the form of an invitation to join season 10 of The Ultimate Fighter, and a first round matchup with internet star Kimbo Slice. Everybody and their mama that was a UFC fan that did not know who I was, thought I was gonna lose. They thought Kimbo was gonna win. I showed the difference between an MMA fighter and a street fighter. If I wanna hold you down and put you in a crucifix and pinch your nose and go honk, honk, I can do whatever I want. That's the difference. Roy scored easy victories over Justin Wren and James McSweeney, earning a spot in the finale against former NFL fullback Brendan Schaub. And here we go. And I threw my right hand, and then I touched his jaw. Nelson swinging back. And I was like, whoa, 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 that was too easy. Go oh, in right right hand. Country. And then the last one, I just doubled up on my jab, came right over his hand, and ended up knocking him out. the underdog coming in, but, you know, I'm just a fat guy, so it's okay. Well, you're a lot more than just a fat guy. You're a fat guy who can fight his ass off. Just three months later, Roy took on six foot eleven submission specialist, Stefan Struve. I jabbed a couple times, hit, hit did an uppercut, and then he jabbed over me, threw an overhand right, he dropped to the floor. Oh, 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 now 
he should be talking smack. Now's the time to talk, because now he's really shown the world what he's capable of. Boy, Big Country Nelson is no joke, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! But at UFC 117, the competition gets stiffer. Junior Dos Santos' nickname, Cigano, means gypsy. A moniker earned when he left home at 18 and wandered Brazil trying to find purpose in his life. His dream was to be free. He came from a small town and he just wanted to see the world. His biggest dream was to see America. Cigano settled in Salvador in northern Brazil. After two years waiting tables, he began training jiu-jitsu and took boxing lessons from the country's national coach, Luis Doria. The boxing just evolved in a way I've never seen before, and I started training him more to fight. He's just a kid who's very determined, very focused, knows exactly what he wants. He eats, sleeps, trains. That's all he does. The dedication quickly paid off. Junior won six of his first seven fights, all in the first round. In his UFC debut, he shocked elite heavyweight Fabricio Verdum. Go, guys! Verdum, Dos Santos. Stefan Struve, Mirko Krokov, Gilbert Ivo, and Gabriel Gonzaga all suffered the same fate. It's not just about beating the big names. It's not about beating the legends. It's the way he has been beating these guys. I believe in me, I believe in my hands. I think I can knock out everybody in the UFC. Now, only one man stands between the former drifter and a title shot. The key to this fight is going to be Junior's patience. He's got to be able to have the patience to wait for the perfect time to knock Roy Nelson out. If he tried to stay stand up with me and use his boxing or his Muay Thai, I will knock him out. It's really not like, are you the better striker, are you the better grappler? Who really cares? At the end of the day, it's, are you the better fighter? If you're going to fight for the belt, you better have every part of the arsenal. You can't forget that this guy's got great jiu-jitsu, and he will get you down to the ground, and once he puts that weight on you, you know, that's a lot of weight. Do not let his physique fool you. He's a serious black belt Brazilian jiu-jitsu with power in his hands. My jiu-jitsu is good, too. Yeah, he's a black belt. I'm a brown belt, but... Don't worry, in the MMA is different. MMA got punches in the face too, you know? I have no doubt in my mind that Cigano is gonna just totally put Ryan Elson out of the picture. Oh! Junior Dos Santos just put him away. At the end of the day, Junior's gonna go, I'll never fight Roy Nelson again. And that's how I wanna fight all my fights, is whoever fights me, they'll go, I'll never fight Roy Nelson again. I want so much to be the, the champion in the UFC. Yeah! And I will.